Peace, everyone. Welcome back. So, let's talk. I made a post. This was, I think, before the New Year, actually, around Christmas time. Because I had received like this influx of unexpected text messages from I'm like nobody's essentially. I'm like, wait, who are you? <laughs> yeah, if anybody start acting brand new, it's me. <laughs> okay, like I think I can outdo anybody acting brand new, but I have my reasons. So I, like, I was trying to figure out why are these particular people messaging me? Like, out of nowhere. Like, I haven't heard from this person. I haven't talked to this person. I cut contact. Like, if I don't engage in regular, consistent conversation with a person, like, I don't know who the hell you are. And out of nowhere, I like, I cannot make this up. I swear, it was just like, what is happening? And granted, I did get a new phone. So that was part of the reason why I was a bit confused. But I'm getting these text messages from like unsaved numbers, these random people. I'm like, who are you? And I said that, and I find it interesting when people, even if you still are in contact with them, how they get offended when you be like, wait, who is this? And you let them know, like, I got a new phone, right? Not that I want to get a new phone, but I, ended up, I was forced to get a new phone. And I had said that, I'm like, sorry, who? is this All right and then the person sending pictures i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe you don't remember me no i do not and in fact after it took a while for me to kind of go down memory lane i'm like okay i vaguely remember you in fact we've never met We've never met. And I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, yo, what is up with these men trying to get some holiday ads? It cannot be nothing more than just simply trying to get some holiday ads, right? And then someone commented, uh, saying, this woman commented saying, oh, they think that they can get some. They think they, I said, because I, I said, this shop is closed. They're like, oh, they think that your shop is back open. But it was never open to them, right? Like, what the hell would y'all think this shit is? I just thought, like, yo, I'm like, what the hell? First of all, I thought it was funny. Then I'm like, y'all got to be out your mind. I kind of took offense to it. Like, why are you hitting me up? So both of them actually live in D.C. And I remember actually when we, like, I remember us exchanging contact information. We met off a of dating app. I met both of those dudes off a of dating app. This was way back when I was in L.A., and I actually was going to move to D.C. Because I was going to Howard University, but I ended up taking the detour, right? And I ended up not going to Howard University. And I just stayed out in L.A. and finished my doctoral studies out there. But when I was, like, preparing, I thought I was going to be transferring to, to Howard University. I ended up setting my intentions on that. And I started to explore dating in D.C. I even went to D.C., not for dating, but just, like, for business purposes or whatever, and I remember talking to a few dudes. Now, DC got like a good little selection of men, right? So I'm just like, okay, just seeing what the selection, seeing what the dating pool looked like in DC. It ain't too bad. I'm just like, okay. So I remember both of these guys that hit me up like just last month. And I remember us talking, but I don't remember anything behind that. I remember like the, like, I, I, they're not memorable characters, right? But they were so disheartened when I shut them down. I'm just like, I don't really, we didn't build a connection. We never met. Like, it was nothing. Sorry, right? <laughs> I just thought it was funny because they, I guess, in their mind, they thought that I would remember and, like, we would just be like, no, no, like, I, that's how I am. And I get that same reaction from other men who I actually either have met or maybe we just like exchange text messages with the intent of meeting what we didn't meet. And like, it'll be a span of time that happens, right? Between us. And then like they pop up out of nowhere kind of thing, like wanting me to just be like, okay, 
like, I don't know what kind of women they're used to, but I'm just like, first of all, I'm already guarded. So if you get to the point of getting my phone number and we are making phone conversation, that's your moment, yo. That's your time, bruh. Because anything outside of that, and especially if time has elapsed, it's like, I am not going to come with that same energy that I did before when we exchanged contact information. That was the whole point of us exchanging. Like, I don't waste time. That's my thing. It should be very clear. Any Like a woman that holds your PhD, and I hate to emphasize this, but whether a PhD or any kind of degree or any kind of... Um, level of success or accolade it's like it should go without saying this this woman is very goal driven she's goal directed like she got her ducks lined up in the road she don't have time to wait she's not around here playing games right so it's like when you men and this is advice to men if you're watching this which i know my channel most of my viewers are men this is for you. It's just like if you have a woman's contact information and you're interested in her, like that's your time. Seize that moment because you're not going to get, I know not from, for me, you ain't going to get another chance. It's not another go round when it comes to that. Right? It's like you had it and then that was it. It expired essentially. I don't really know who you are. And even like aside from those two men, because those were men that I never met face to face. They just didn't get to that point. Could have, right? Because obviously they got the number, so they checked out in many different areas to get my phone number. But it's just like, nah. Aside from them, though, I have gotten like phone calls and messages recently from people that I've met. And this is like ongoing. This is not even centered around the holidays. This is like ongoing. And it may come off as if I am conceited or I'm this, I'm that. Like, I am Danielle. And yes, I am a little bit tired because I worked a whole day today, okay, at the hospital. It wasn't too hectic, but we I had several meetings um, with patients and it was, yeah. That's a separate story. But anyway, so it's like, I... When I, when I speak on like coming with that same energy, I don't come with that same energy. Like who I was when we were vibing at that time, I am not that person now. Like my perspective has changed, right? You know, my value continues to go up. How I perceive myself, my own self-worth, my self-value is steady going up. So just imagine, it's just like, okay, I've met a good number of men that, you know, were prospects. We went on a few dates. Some, it was more than just a date, right? We were vibing, we connected. And I'm thinking of this one particular person. I feel like he could be a friend. And I refer to him sometimes in my videos as a friend. He's on like one of two people. I only had two people in my space where I live now here in Upper East Side of Manhattan, New York. He's one of those two people that I invited. He actually was the first person I invited to my space. And yes, I refer to him as a friend, quote unquote, but I'm just like, even him. <laughs> like, it's not that same energy. And I think on their end, it's like they want it to be. They want us to, some like me, to do, somehow be open to you know, with them and, and, and receiving of their attempts, right? And their efforts, but I'm just like, I can't. And this is why, because it's like my perspective definitely has changed. Like for me, loyalty is of utmost importance, right? So when I say that, it's just like consistency is important and loyalty is important. If I, if we're friends, like if we establish a connection at any point, right? And we're there. Like, it, it should maintain that. Like, it takes two, obviously, to maintain that connection, right? And if I feel like, okay, something happens, which things happen in relationships, but if it's just like, if there is something that is like, obviously, driving a wedge between us and our, our friendship, our relationship, 
Like it's that's that's what's meant to be. I don't backpedal, and that's the title of this video. Like in terms of going back to old relationships or to dead relationships, I have no interest in that. Because I'm so for it moving, right? And and we can we can ride it out. You know, that's what that's what really should happen. You know, ride out those tough times, you know, and have communi open communication. You know, this is like a teaching lesson here, a, a lesson here in this story that I just find it interesting. I'm sure that some people who have reached out to me probably will see this video, but it's just like, for me, that's important. Communication is important. Maintaining that on both sides. And when there is a lapse, a significant lapse of time, in a relationship, like I am like, I'm, I'm going to be brand new with you. I don't know you. Like, who are you? And they pop up like, what's up, friend? I'm like, <laughs> you know, friends over here. Like, why are you messaging me? That happened actually what just yesterday. This person just messaged me and I'm just like, okay, can you get to the point? That's just my personality altogether anyway. That's just how I am. Like, I don't like to tap around and beat around the bush. Get straight to the point for why you call me. Why are you messaging me? I was just messaging you to see what how you were doing. Like, didn't you just do that a couple of weeks ago? I just find it weird because the reason why it's weird because it's like, how can a person go so long without communicating with, with you, right? And then pop up out of nowhere and be like, what's up? Like, it's nothing up. You know, and yo, when I say like I have, yo, I've come across and met so many different men, good prospects. And it's like, I have my eyes on you. At one time, like I felt something towards you, but that's died down and it's not going to rekindle. It's not coming back. Like whatever it was that we had, that was then. <laughs> It's no longer, it's never coming back, right? Like, that's your moment to seize that moment. That's your time to seize that moment and build upon that. And then we will still have it, right? But you lost that opportunity. Now, ladies, if you're watching this, feel free to share your perspective on this. And even men, too. But I do want to hear from the ladies. It's just like, is it? I know it's not just me. <laughs> because, you know, I know I can be difficult. I'm some I've said I've been so told that I can be difficult at times. I've been told that recently actually. Like, why are you being difficult? But it's just like no, like, don't fuck up. <laughs> that's the thing. Like I don't give people chances to fuck up. <laughs> that's the that's the issue right there. You don't get two, one and two and three and four and five chances. Like you have one chance. After that, you're not gonna get a second chance, a third chance. Like no, it's not going to happen. And I feel like the fact that people expect that, shame on you. Shame on you that you expect me to give you another chance. The chance that you had, you didn't appreciate that. You didn't value that. I can give so many examples, but I'm not going to do that here in this video. I just wanted to make that clear here in this video. Like, that's my, per that's my take. That's my perspective. Like, I do not backpedal. There are people that do, and I feel like they don't value themselves. They don't love themselves. Like, their bar is set very low. You know, when it comes to loyalty, it's just like, no, my bar is very high. <laughs> Probably so goddamn high, nobody can reach that shit. Like, that's just how it is. And especially when it comes to, like, my choice and a partner, you know, I feel like I'm constantly evolving as we should be, right? So it's like when I say who I was, the person I was then is much different. And I saw this meme that said that you can look at a person's level of mental illness or health, however you want to frame it, just based on the partners, like the timeline of their partners, who they dated. Just look at their partners and that can tell you the progression of that person's mental well-being, right? Um, or deterioration of their 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 well being or their mental illness, and I just like damn that shit is facts and it speaks to like where you are at in your life emotionally, right? In terms of your emotional development, where are you at in your life? Where I was at in my life 
when I was attracted to a certain person, you know, back then, that's not where I am now. I'm constantly evolving day to day. So I'm looking, you know, I'm thinking, like, I'm asking myself, like, could I? Hell no. It's not even much to think about. Like, the answer is already really there. But I ask the question because it's just like, perhaps, right? Because I'm thinking, okay, everything happens for a reason. And I know this person is single. You know, I know this person has his own place, right? He could meet the criteria, but I'm not even attracted to this person at this point. So what do you do? <laughs> like, I'm not even physically, like, and I'm, I think back, like, damn, I was attracted to you? That shit is crazy. And it makes me also think, like, married couples and how they remain in love and married for so long, given that we go through so many changes. How can you solidify that love so that it's everlasting? How do people do that? I'm asking you guys this question. It's not a rhetorical question, but how do people do Because I look at a person like, yo, I see why people fall in and out of love. That probably would be me. Just like, what reason do I have to stay here if I'm not even physically attracted to you anymore, right? It's just, I think, yes, that's important. Physical attraction is definitely important and that ties into chemistry which is important obviously for the the intimacy and the, the sexual intimacy to happen you know um but yeah like i'm looking i'm thinking about that person like damn he's not even i'm not even attracted to him and at some point i was but this was like years ago i met this guy what back in 20 was it 2019 2018 but either way it was like back when i was in la you know we're in 2023 now so it's just like definitely my preferences have changed right how i see myself has definitely changed my self-concept you know my self-pride it's just steadily going up so i even like from week to week like i, I look at the the guy that I was just talking to uh, like a week ago by phone, we haven't even met like the date that was supposed to happen. And then like, I'm a bit removed from it now and looking at this, thinking about him, I'm just like, damn, why? I'm not even attracted to his ass anymore. I was initially at that time, like a week ago, but he's not even attractive to me. She's, uh, excuse me, this is not, but who is attractive? Let me tell you this, because I think I made a video on this before, like my type. And, you know, this is like some people just don't get it. And I get many messages from white men, black men, like trying to solicit my interest and in, in talking with them. And it's like, you're not even my type. And the question came up because I made this post on Facebook about how it's something mesmerizing about an alpha male that provides and protects. And it was a beta male that jumped on that post and commented, I actually know him in real life. Um, I think he's, I think he's bisexual too, but he has the nerve to ask me why, like what is so attractive about an alpha male? I feel like that should go without saying, but let me answer that question. I'll make a whole separate video on that. And I'm definitely about to wrap this up because I'm about to get about to get dinner but it's just like it's about what is compatible to you right and knowing who i am the femininity that that lives within me you know of course i think oftentimes many men don't get to see it because you're just not there yet but the right man definitely will bring it out of me and any woman i think right it's there you just don't get to experience it because you're not deserving and you're not, first of all, to be trusted, number one. Um, you're not alpha. You're not a dominant man. So a woman is not going to be submissive to you. you don't, you're not, right? Like, you're not deserving. You're not there. Women just don't, submissive women just don't submit just by mere reason of just being submissive. It's just like, no, not any self-respecting intelligible woman it's just it's not going to happen so i think it's just something with 
and a woman that craves that dominance, that leadership, that knows what is right, right? And what really is attractive, you know, for a man to be a provider, first of all, he has to be financially stable. Like we're talking about the cream of the crop, right? Men who are at, within a certain tax bracket, men who rest within a certain degree of socioeconomic status in our society. A lot of men don't fall there, right? And it may come off as, okay, this person is being whatever, right? Gold digger. No, right? This, this ties into a, a person's adaptability, right? We're talking about survival characteristics, right? We're talking about for thinking it and planning, pre-planning, family planning, right? Women look, women ask questions for a reason to see, you know, where a man stands. Is he able to even take care of himself? A lot of men, unfortunately, black men don't fall within that. Not to say all, but, you know, they struggle in that department, not being able to take care of themselves, let alone being able to provide for a family. That's the reason why they be like 50-50 type deal. They want to do the whole 50-50 because they're not there. And what would be attractive about a man who wants a woman as a roommate? It's just like, what can you bring to her? I, like, my interest, my focus is not even directed at a man who is not in a position to be able to take care of himself and provide for a family you know, if a family was to come, right? It's like, you, you want to lead with sex. You want to talk about fucking and doing this and that, but that's irresponsibility. How can you build a community, right? We look to these men to be leaders. You're talking about building community, but you can't even take care of your household. How unattractive is that? That's not attractive. It's just like... I think for women to set this standard for a man to to be within a certain tax bracket, it just shows that, okay, what's important is not that she's only thinking about herself or in that relationship, right? A potential in herself in that being a relationship is that she's thinking about community. You think about it, right? She's thinking about the greater context of things because that's what's really important. We live, we, I mean, that's just face it. We live in a society where money is important. You have to have money to survive. We're talking about basic economics here, right? So basically what these women are communicating, such as myself, is get yourself together financially. Duh, it's like, but these men don't have father figures. They don't have, you know, prominent male figures to look up to to understand it, that should go without saying. That's a lesson that a male figure would teach you how to do that, to stack your paper, right? So that you are well off financially. And when you are in that position, you can do anything. The world is yours, right? Men want to talk about being polygamous, but y'all ass living in an apartment. <laughs> like, what does polygamy mean to you? Just fucking different women. It's not polygamy. Polygamy is a socio-economic political structure where you're talking about building, you're talking about changing the landscape of how dating and marriage and family looks, especially for the black community, as opposed to creating multiple broken homes. They don't have it together. So yeah, that's definitely obviously something that I hold of high importance, right? Just having that financial stability and setting those values in place of knowing the importance of leading as a man, how to do that, how to be a provider, right? And to protect, that should go without saying. And being a protector is obviously you carry this dominant energy. You're not telling her, okay, go see who at the door kind of shit, <laughs> You know, these men, it's easy to tease apart an alpha male versus a, a beta male or a passive male. It's easy, right? It's all in their personality. It's all in the things they say, the things they do, right? How, I, I cannot even, uh, I can't begin to say like how many men I've come across who be like, okay, so what do you want to do? 
what are we doing on our first date? It's just like, yo, have intentions. There's a big difference between a man who'll be like, okay, we'll see what happens versus a man is just like, okay, be ready by eight. You know, I have this and this and this option set up for the woman to choose from. We're going to do this as you, you pick, right? But at least lay out, you know what I'm saying? The, the foundation, lay out the options there. Have a plan. We'll see what happens. What kind of shit is that? You can tell like those men have no sense of direction, no kind of uh, confidence in themselves, right? Like, where is your dignity? They don't have it. And any man that I'm up against where I see that I hold more confidence, I am more goal-directed, right? I'm more about building family and building community than he is. I just don't find that attractive, you know? And yes, women, we can be leaders, but it's just like, I can't. Like, those kind of men, you just like, they... They have this, it may appear like, okay, they are agreeable, right? And that can appear to be a, a good characteristic in a relationship for a man to just kind of be a yes man, man, or whatever, and, and going with the flow. But it'd be those men that you have to worry about. Those men don't take responsibility. So I think sometimes we get this alpha male kind of trope confused right and people think that it's all about being aggressive you know and bossing a woman around that's not what it is these men are men who are real leaders they take responsibility they're not blaming the system for everything the white man they they own their responsibility and their survival right and and their ability to thrive in this society that we live in they own that not pointing fingers, assigning blame, but they're being men, <laughs> right? Because who else is going to do it for them? They know that no one else is going to take care of them but them. No one else is going to fix their problems but the person looking in the mirror. Those are the kind of men, right? And those men are the ones who take initiative. They go out and they make things happen. They're not waiting for things to happen. It's all in, you know, who you are, and who you are is going to resonate, is going to shine, it's going to be revealed, you know, from the inside out. People can see that just based on your language, based on, you know, your communication, how you move. You know, you have a lot of men also that are surrounded by a lot of feminine energy. That, to me, is a turn off, right? A lot of times, you know, I come across guys and they look at me and they be like, oh, well, you know, you have all this going for yourself. You're beautiful. Why are you single? It's just like, yo, the majority of men that are in the dating pool, like, I'm not really attracted to. They may come off one way, and it seems as though, you know, just based on their presentation, they give this, you know, facade that they are alpha, and they're protectors, they're providers, but they're really not. They're surrounded by a lot of feminine energy. That is another thing that is very unattractive to me. Um, and this feminine energy is like telling them what to do, right? Because for whatever reason, they, you know, they're craving that, that feminine energy. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just like, know your place. There's a time and a place for everything. And when you are seriously talking about building with a woman, with a counterpart, whether male or female, you're seriously talking about bringing someone into your sphere, in a monogamous committed relationship, like you have to focus your energy and your tents on that. That's the only way it's going to manifest. And I feel like nowadays people think they like, look at that as if it's just so much to do. And then the ones that are serious about it, it's just like they got some other shit going on, right? It's just like, wait a minute. You know, it's always something. So for me, yeah, yeah, I definitely um, don't backpedal. Like, I don't care how the bad the dating pool looks. I am not going back to what was, what could have been. Like, I feel like if it didn't happen then, it is not going to happen. It don't need to happen. And I'm not even looking that way because I'm not attracted to that. Right? It's, it's nothing that can convince me that, okay, this is it. 
no amounting, no amount of convincing, uh, uh, no amount of, of, Hey, you know, let's check this out. Look what I have. You know, it was like, no, no amount of nothing. <laughs> you can't, can take me back to back pedal, you know, and, and people do it. I've seen it. I've seen even my own family. I can't name no names, but even like people, in my own family have went back with a person like that even betrayed them it's like how can you like are you that low you know some people do have low self-esteem and it's just like they don't value themselves i just i don't see it you know i don't i'm thinking like i'm going down memory lane thinking like is there one person from my past that i would rekindle <laughs> Oh, I don't see not one at all. I don't even care to know like, oh, how you been? I know. I I could care less. Hell to the fuck no. Mm mm. Cause I just feel like I get that we're all on our journey, right? And I get that, you know, we all have our paths and everybody has their struggles and this and that, right? But my thing would be like, you know, where are your asses at doing X, Y, Z? You know? Where were you then? Nowhere. <laughs> like, nowhere to be found. So, like, why would I even try to make accommodations to include you in my life, especially where I'm at now? Nigga, I'm on a freaking up and up. Like, shit is good. Shit is lovely. So, it's just like, mm-mm. The time like the, when I was going through it, that's when they should have stayed. That's when you should have set their intentions. It's not that they, they didn't, they weren't around. They were around, but I feel like that's when you should have been blowing up my phone, setting your intentions, you know, directing that energy in that moment towards building, if that's what you seriously want to do. Scatterbraining all over the place, right? And then popping up now, blowing up my shit. I'm like, how do these motherfuckers even still have my phone number? I don't get it. We're talking about four or five year time lapse. Like, how do you even still? I'm trying to, like, how does motherfuckers still even got my phone number? Because I know I damn sure ain't got theirs because I have a new phone. But even with my old phone, I don't even think that shit is in my damn old phone. Like, what is this about? I just find that shit so weird. But I'm about to end this video. I might come back tomorrow and do a separate video where I go a little bit deeper on talking about, like, alpha male energy. There's nothing about a beta male. Nothing about a, a submissive man is attractive to me. And granted, I have dated one, but I was so repulsed at him to the point where it was just like, him being on the other side, it just wasn't a good match, <laughs> you know. It just, it just is not gonna come off right, right? It's like my love that I could have had towards him just didn't turn out right. That's all I can say. I can't even say exactly what it just didn't like. Yo, it's not a good match, right? I need that strong backbone kind of energy. I need that alpha male energy, a man that knows how to lead, that isn't intimidated by me. People laugh when women like myself, who do possess a lot of power, who are very smart and headstrong, say that men are intimidated by us. They laugh. It's just like, that is true, though. You can laugh through the screen, but in person, face to face, these men, yo, you, I run circles around their fucking ass. You're intimidated. If you're intimidated by a successful, strong, powerful black woman, just, you can say that. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You know, understand that when a woman is single, She's single by choice. And a woman of my, like myself, of this stature, is single. It's by choice. Please understand that. I think a lot of people get it confused, right? And they twist the narrative as if, like, okay, how can a person be intimidated by you? These are single women. Like, you're lonely and all of this. It's just like, I don't think you quite know me. 
you know, if anything, like I run men away. Like I don't, like I make it clear and I cut men off, right? Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps we can do a call to see how many men who actually have been dying and wanting to be with me and in my presence. And I just be like, I cut them off. And one can say, you're probably cutting off your blessing. No, these are not blessings. They're just not meant for me. I know what's for me and they ain't it. Okay. Not even backpedaling. I have no interest in going backwards at all. Um, but I will entertain and definitely not through social media. It's just, just me putting this out there. Like, yes, I'm interested. I'm open. I'm, you know, on a few different dating apps. Um, you know, but I'm very calculated and very careful about who I even chat with on those apps, you know. And it's just, it's, I feel like I make it difficult on purpose and I feel like the right one, you know, if they truly want something to, to pop off, gonna see through all of those barriers and make it way, make their way through all those barriers. If it's meant to be, you know, I'm not definitely not pressed for that because... I've been there, done that. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I think, yes, love can be a beautiful thing when it's pure, okay? A lot of people in relationships, it ain't necessarily pure love. They just in it. They just in a relationship, they just say they in one, right? And I'm, I feel like I love myself too much. Like, I am the prize. I am, you know, what what's happening. So I don't feel like I need to be with someone to make myself what's happening. I am was like, you know what I'm saying? All by myself. <laughs> um, if I get with somebody, then, you know, hopefully they can match my energy and what I bring or even more, even better, you know, and then they might, could, they could be an addition to my life. But at this point, if anything, I feel like relationships are more of a liability, <laughs> You know, because the stress that comes with that and the uncertainties and, you know, people doing sneaky shit and just like, you can't trust, it's like, it's too much, right? I feel like it's much easier to be single and I definitely accepted my singlehood and, you know, found happiness, more happiness being single than being with somebody else. <laughs> That's just how it has been. Um, I've accomplished more in my singlehood than I have ever accomplished being with a man. So it's not that I'm not open to dating, you know, possibly marriage, but it just, it has to be per. It has to be right. It has to be perfect. But then no, I'll catch you guys later. I just, I, I feel good. I feel good. Excuse me. I feel good um, sharing this. I drink lots of water, you guys. So, you know, burping up a storm, trying to figure out what I want to eat for dinner. But I feel good releasing that. I feel like that needed to be said. And I just want people, men and women alike, like to, yo, know, people so stuck in the past. It's just like, I feel like if you work on yourself, which I, you know, I'm constantly a work in progress. I've done a lot of work on myself. Just well, that's the thing. That's that's the prize I think in being single because you have that time to yourself to work on yourself, right? You like I'm always by myself. I'm I'm with myself. The voice in my head, the voices in my head, right? Right? Because you when you're alone, you get to hear yourself. You get to hear your thoughts. Right, and be with yourself, right? And that's the your time to improve who you are, to become a better person tomorrow than you were today. That's the whole goal. And when you reach that point, it's just like it you attract a different kind of energy, right? It takes a different kind of person to get your interest. It's not so cut and dry. It's not that easy. And I really would like for men and women to just sit within that period of singlehood, right? And be isolative so that you can look within yourself to see who you truly are. So a lot of broken people entering into relationships that don't need to be in a relationship. That's the problem, you know? 
with insecurities and all this stuff going on and, and they just dumping they shit. And I talked about this in my, my other video that I made when I talked about the date that didn't happen recently, right? <laughs> that I canceled that fucking shit. I canceled that date. Um, but I kind of went down memory lane and just recalling like some fucking nightmarish dates that I had, like some nightmare ass shit um, where, you know, people, this guy, he wasn't, like he was carrying this unhealed trauma <laughs> onto a date, like, you know, with his insecurities and that shit is not attractive at all, but he carried that um, into that short-lived, you know, relationship that existed between us. And that, you know, no, if you spend time by yourself and it's when you are alone and you by yourself and when you reach that point where you can be content with life, like life, you see it in full color, the full spectrum of color being alone. That's when that's a good space to be in. It's a terrible space when you are, when you become single and some people, they get out of a relationship and then they go into singlehood and like they that like are the most afraid at that point that they cannot just be. They're constantly trying to fill some void, right? And, and being single and they feel so lonely and they're craving for this, this affection from another person. I don't feel like that's a good time. Like that's not a good space to be in, to be trying to get with a partner. No, the best time is when you are single for however long it takes for you to be get to that point, right? You're single and you've sat there and you, you've existed and you've met, you experienced many different things through that singlehood, right? For me, like I started a whole new job. I finished a whole PhD program, right? Being single. You know, started a whole job as a psychologist, right? Moved to move back to New York. Like I've gone through all these different things. I want to go traveling as a single person, just experience many different facets of life as a single person. And then it's like, and and when you can do that and be happy, that's the whole key point. Doing all these different things as a single person and having joy through all of it being happy, being content, seeing the beauty in life all while single, then that's when you're ready, right? Because you then you really have become a fulfilled, complete person. You know, a lot of these people, they have these voids that weren't met for many different reasons at many different points in their life. And they seek out relationships thinking this other person can help fill that void that sense of emptiness thinking that's going to change something it doesn't you're going to carry that in a whole another relationship you're going to still feel empty then you're going to blame that person for your lack of happiness you don't make me happy and i made this another video on this i talked about it several times that it is not your partner's responsibility to make you happy that's not anyone's responsibility but you have people that go in it with that distorted belief they truly believe that it's another person's job in a relationship for their happiness so they're not happy oh is there your fault hell no that's some dysfunctional ass shit you should be happy because a happy person is an emotionally and psychologically healthy person independent of anyone else no one can make you happy. Nothing can make you happy. We're talking about things, external things, external people outside of yourself. You should be happy. When you reach that point, we talk, that's a whole nother level right there. We're talking about levels of spirituality. When you can see that everything that makes you who you are is within yourself, It lies within yourself. Everything that you need is within yourself. Right? The reality that you have is a projected reality. The reality that you experience is only projected. 
which means that your mind controls your reality and what is true. You have to reverse that conditioning, undo and rewind that conditioning that you're encapsulated in, that you have, you believe that you have to have X, Y, and Z to be happy. That's a form of negative conditioning. A lot of people have succumbed to that. That's not truth. That's falsehood. Right? So you go down this uh, black hole, this never ending path, this journey to find happiness in other people. And that shit is so draining and depressing, yo. And then this is one explanation for why people cheat. Because they're like, okay, this person don't make me happy. I'm going to go to the next person. And it becomes a serial affair. This never-ending quest for you to find happiness in different extraneous relationships that never happens. Because happiness is truly, and I know it sounds cliche, but it's within you. You have to come to terms with yourself. Resolve those past unhealed traumas, childhood and adolescent developmental traumas, right? You know, whatever happened in the past, that shit happened. You know, I can go on and on, but I have to wrap this video up. I want this shit. It's already probably an hour now, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um... I definitely, oh, it's only 46 minutes. I can definitely go on and on because it's just like, I think that's the problem. And for me, I've, I've I've been reached that point. You know, it's not hard because I always knew like who I am and what I possess. I always knew like I was it. <laughs> that's just me, right? I came with it, you know, growing up. Like I am that person, right? Like I always knew that my reality is determined by me and I impose different experiences into my environment. Not to say I can't be impacted by my environment, but I am the one who shapes my environment, right? That is God-like behavior. That's a God-like mind. You have Christians that claim that they're God-like, but are you really? If you don't know that you, your reality is what you create, that's God-like. You are the creator of your reality. Another person can add to that experience, right? But what you experience should already be fulfilled in and of itself, right? And the other people outside of that experience that you have already fulfilled within yourself, that reality that you've already fulfilled, that joy that you've already experienced and that you already continue to possess can be added upon by other people that you choose to invite. If anything, though, this is a mistake because if anything, I think it's easier for other people to subtract from that, right? So you can already have the it fact. You already have this thing on this reality where you feel content, you're happy, you feel joyful, right? If anything, people are going to subtract. The likelihood of people adding to you versus subtracting, I think, is more common. It's a stronger likelihood that that's going to happen, you know? Because a lot of people just aren't happy within themselves. That's why I'm okay being single because, you know, I've reached that level many times. Like, I'm, I'm there, Right? Um, of course, I live in, in this society where I live in this world that, you know, I'm impacted by other people's reality, you know, unless you're living in, on an island, right, or in a bubble. It's just like you have these interactions, this back and forth with people. And, you know, that sometimes can complicate your reality, right? And then that's where your reality may become convoluted based on someone else's perception, you know, because they aren't at that point yet in their journey, their spiritual journey to the point where, you know, they see the world 
for what it truly is. Not what it can be, but what it truly is in a positive light, right? So it's some metaphysical shit right here. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Feel free to share your comments below. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. No backpedaling at all. <laughs>